Here's a quick agenda for today. First, we're going to have a little introduction of the prerequisites, so what we mean when we say prerequisites, and especially on the SOISO platform. Then we're going to do a demo, and I'm going to show you how you can create a prerequisite on the platform. And then we're going to have some questions. So first of all, prerequisites are a way for teachers to create dependencies within the content. So for example, if you have tests or assignments or chapters on the platform, you can connect and make them dependent on each other. So let's say you want to lock a few tests before opening up a chapter or the other way around. You're going to see a few examples. It's not going to be that abstract in just a second. But for now, it's good to know you can make these connections between separate functionalities on the platform. Prerequisites are set up per, uh, per class, and they only apply to the students in that class. And it's also not possible to assign a prerequisite for one student or for a group of students. It's going to be available for all of the students in that class. So here is one example of a prerequisite. Uh, they have sources and targets. So targets, that's something that we're going to lock for the students. They're not going to see it right away but they first have to fulfill these sources that you see on the left side. So just a few examples of sources here. One of them is a chapter on numbers. So they have to complete the chapter on numbers. The second condition is that they have to fulfill a test of integers and not only just do it, they have to actually pass the test. And also a date needs to be reached. And of course, you don't have to set up that many sources. This could have easily been just one source and one target. But just for this example now, if the student completes the chapter on numbers, they do the test on integers. And then also if the date is reached, if this is one of the conditions, then the target is going to open up. And in this case, that means that the test, midterm test on numbers is going to be available for the students to do it. So I hope that makes a bit of a clarification. We're going to now go into the platform and I'll show you exactly how that uh, looks like. So here we are as a student. If you see here in the upper right, it says I'm in a student role. And when I scroll down here, this is the test that I'm looking for. So I locked this quiz numbers that leads to 10% of your grade as my target. And as a student, I cannot do anything with it. It looks a little bit weird. I cannot click on it. But if I hover over this little padlock, I see a message. I'm not sure if this is too small, but I'll read it out. And it says, this test requires you to master these items first. Assignment, homework, week one numbers. And I can see here under my assignments, here is my homework, week one numbers. So I have to fulfill this first, and then this test is going to open up for me. Uh, there are, of course, multiple ways to use prerequisites, uh, and I'm going to mention them in a little bit. We have a little poll ready for you, so you can also think about how you might want to use prerequisites. It, maybe it helps that you already think about it as I'm explaining it, so you can come up with some questions afterwards as well. So when I switch to the teacher view here, I'm going to go to the teacher tab, which you should have available, of course, as a role of a teacher or in a role of an author or manager. You're always going to have this uh, possibility. And here you see this additional tab next to assignments. It's called prerequisites. And here is one prerequisite that I previously set up to show you that quiz on numbers on the home page. But now we're going to set up a new one from scratch. So it's very easy, very similar to creating tests or assignments. There is just one button you click here. And you can already start creating your prerequisite. Here are the targets that I mentioned before and sources. So as long as you keep clear in your head which one is which, you should be fine. There's also a quick explanation here. So let's say I want to use prerequisites in a different way. A lot of our teachers have a question. I want to do a diagnostic test in, in the beginning of the year. And then based on that, I want my students to have some materials available to them. So because of that, I created a source, a diagnostic test that I just made before. So here is my test. And I'm going to set it up as a condition. So the students have to do this first. And when they do the diagnostic test, I'm going to go to targets here. And I'm going to choose what's going to open up for them once they have successfully completed the test. So let's say I want to lock the chapter on algebra, linear formulas, systems of linear equations. You can also lock everything here if you want to. For now, I'll just lock these three. 
So these are going to be my targets, what's going to open up once the test is done. I'm going to scroll down and click here on create. And I, I'm purposely making like a very simple prerequisite so you see how it works. But of course, you can spend more time here, make more tests, make more conditions. But for now, we'll just keep it to this. So I've created my prerequisite. You can see it here, a quick overview. Uh, what's the target and what, are, what is the source? You see that the prerequisite is published and you can also manage it here a little bit. You can edit it afterwards, you can copy or delete it. And how does this look like for the student? Well, when I go back to the home page as a teacher, I don't see anything weird happening because as a teacher, you're always have, going to have everything available for you. Even if I lock these chapters, you can still access them. So always make sure to switch to the student view to actually see the results of your settings. So when I close this here, I see that my three chapters are locked and they have these yellow padlocks on them. And if you hover over them, I get a similar message that I saw before. This chapter requires you to master these items first, diagnostic tests. So the students know they have to find their test here under tests and they have to complete this one in order to open up their chapters. So I can start my test here. I set up very easy questions for myself so I don't embarrass myself on the internet, you know, it's always good. So here we have some questions on numbers, you know, we all love to see it. And I've set up 55% uh, as my passing score. So I only have to achieve that much. When I submit my test, uh, I set up the test setting that I got results right away. So when I submit it, I'm going to see that I got 100%. Look at me, mom. <laughs> so I got 100%, but let's say I didn't make 100%. Then the chapters wouldn't open up for me. And another important thing is that you need to make results available for your students. So even if you don't make them automatically available right now, just be sure that you go in and check the test if you do want to do that and then release the results. Otherwise, the condition is not going to be fulfilled. I went back on the home page now and all of my chapters are available. So it was much quicker than I anticipated, actually. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to see if there are any questions uh, here in the chat. No, okay, everything is clear so far. Uh, in that case, I have a question for you. So from what you've seen so far, do you have any ideas how you might want to use prerequisites for your class? Now take your time, these are very long sentences. I really went on to describe what I mean. And the poll is now in the chat, so you can also see and vote in the chat for one of these options if they seem interesting to you. I'm sorry, these are live updated, right? The polls? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I hope you can see the polls also please let us know because we had an issue last week where one of the teachers was using an ipad and then it wasn't visible but let us know if you can see them okay well um, i have one question <coughs> i do not see the chat um ah yes no. it's in the down right corner it's like a little Mm, I, chat with, I got to chat with everyone in call messages. Yes, that's the one. Okay, I do not see the poll over there. Mm. Under activities, maybe. Under activities? What were this one you mean? Yeah. Uh, do you also see the symbol of like a triangle and a square yeah. and a ball right next to it? So there's. Oh, the activities, yeah, over there. <laughs> yeah. And the poll is in there. Okay, thank you, Sonia, for your answer. Let me just see if I can read it. Oh my God, I cannot read it. Oh, okay. 
perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have a comment here that um, it's also possible to use prerequisites in the start and then unlock the prerequisite when students tried it once so to avoid frustration. So I think that's also a good idea. Yeah, and using some tests at the end of the course with increased difficulty, that's also possible, of course. You can definitely set up some tests at the beginning of the course and just lock them so that they open up once the students have completed everything else within that course. So like assignments and tests or you know, practice material. Okay. Well, thank you very much for participating in the poll and letting us know how you would use prerequisites. Are there any other questions right now, considering we have the creator of prerequisites with us here, <laughs> challenging with something? <laughs> or if you have questions about anything else, is it possible to use the test with multiple attempts? Once they failed, do they have to wait? Do you have to wait, let's say, one day to make a new attempt? Uh, so you can use this with multiple attempts. And the first successful attempt is going to already unlock the target from what I tested. At least that's, that's how it looks like. And right now, we don't have this kind of a delay between two test attempts. But we do have some requests about it. I'm not sure if it's going to be developed. I shouldn't make any promises. <laughs> I just discussed it. Um, and uh, yeah, it depends. depends. Maybe, maybe in uh, two springs. But it's good to know that there is interest also from you, uh, from other teachers. Yeah. <clears throat> but basically, the prerequisites work, like unlocking prerequisites works the same way you would expect them to work. So like if a the test like the test settings themselves decide if a prerequisite is like uh, achieved or not. Um, so there's like no additional setting for like if the student has like 55% or more uh, in the prerequisite itself, it always depends on um, the test setting or the assignment setting. Uh, please let us know if you have any other questions, either leave them in the chat or just turn on your camera um, or your microphone if you do want to uh, share. Great. Nice extra feature. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> You're welcome. And thank you also for joining today. This is quite a new feature, actually. I mean, it does exist for a few months now already, but I think it's also a little bit vague when you say prerequisites. It doesn't really immediately make sense what it is, but we really hope that this helps. Uh, this video is also going to be posted on YouTube. We also have a Health Center article that explains this further. And of course, if you think of any questions later today or in a few days when you're working with this and you think, oh, this doesn't really make sense, please let us know. We're very much welcome for feedback. We're open for feedback. And we're ready to help you out with this, of course. So. Uh, yeah, those were the questions. Uh, that would be it for today's webinar. So we hope that was helpful. Please stay connected with us and we hope to speak to you soon, hopefully tomorrow even.